Hey, it's Jeff Sauer here from jefflytics.com, and I'm gonna talk about how to become a freelancer with your Google Analytics skills. Now, the reason why I've created this video is because I've taught over 5,000 people how to understand Google Analytics from the ground up and get their Google Analytics certification. And one of the biggest questions that my students have once they've gone through the course and once they've gone through my program is what can we do with that knowledge? Can we earn some income on the side as a freelancer? Is there any way that we can turn this into either a side business or a full out career as a freelancer, a consultant, or an agency owner? And so since I get this question all the time, I thought it would be great to put together a video to show you your options. So if you have ever contemplated this career path, you're not gonna wanna miss this video when I walk through the options you have to be a Google Analytics freelancer. So you wanna be a Google Analytics freelancer. Awesome. It's a pretty sweet gig. It's something I've done quite a bit as a freelancer and I've helped many people get this gig as well. It's a pretty cool gig. It can be rewarding and lucrative as long as you do things right. But I will warn you, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. It's a business. And it's a business that you need to understand and navigate before jumping into it. Or I'd recommend that you at least understand and navigate because if you don't understand how to navigate this industry, What's gonna happen is you're gonna jump in head first, things are not gonna work how you want them to, and you're gonna blame the industry, even though most likely it's probably a failure in your approach. And I don't say this lightly. I've seen many consultants who basically are unhappy with their job, they wanna jump into something new, and they leave their current gig, and then about two months later, they're looking for a job because they had no idea what they were getting into. All they knew is that they didn't like what they had previously and they wanted to try something new. Now, I don't recommend that. I don't recommend just jumping into something face first without a plan. And in this video, we're gonna show you a plan you can take if you wanna become a Google Analytics freelancer. And of course, during this process, you're gonna have a lot of questions and you will be seeking answers. So here are my best tips for becoming a Google Analytics freelancer. Number one, brainstorm the services that you're gonna offer. Start with this, what do you like doing? And I'm talking about professionally, what do you like doing as it comes to Google Analytics or Web Analytics? Whatever you're looking to get into, what do you like doing the most? The next part, what do prospective clients need? Now, you might already have a handle on this because you work with clients already or you're doing it in your job. What do people really need? Where are they struggling all the time? And finally, what will they pay you for? Because if you wanna be successful, you need to go where the money is. You need to go to a place where people actually have a budget set aside to pay for your services. So put these all together and find your sweet spot. What do you enjoy doing? What do your clients need? And what makes you money? And you wanna be positioned right there in the center of these circles. You wanna be there because that is exactly where your sweet spot is. Now here's some ideas you might think of when it comes to taking your Google Analytics skills and turning it into a lucrative business as a freelancer. You could be an outsourced analyst, somebody who is basically taking on the role of an in-house analyst, but they're either not as expensive as a full-time employee or there's other benefits around being outsourced. And companies really like this because sometimes they can't take on a full employee, but they're willing to pay you as a contractor to get the same amount of work done. Monthly reporting. This could be an automated monthly report where you send out a report to an organization each month you could do it for several organizations. You could write scripts. You could develop API calls. You could do all kinds of cool stuff around monthly reporting or quarterly reporting or weekly reporting, whatever the reporting interval is. That could be your business. That could be what you do as a freelancer. You could audit existing accounts. A lot of people have Google Analytics installed. We're talking about 100 plus million installs of Google Analytics all over the internet. And most of them have a vanilla installation and most of them have a vanilla installation of Google Analytics and a bunch of bad data. You could take a look at those accounts and you could make a living just auditing them, telling them what's wrong and giving them a map for improvement or even implementing those improvements. You could be the technical tagging expert, the person who is an expert in the technical tagging, meaning putting tags on the website, the data collection, everything that happens around the technical aspect of collecting web analytics data. You could be that expert and you could make a nice living doing that. You could be the integrations expert, somebody who specializes in integrating the Google Analytics system with other platforms. You can say, hey, I do integrations only with CRM systems. These specific CRM systems are my expertise and that's all that I do and I do it well. 
You can choose from being super broad to being super specific, but these are just some ideas as to some things you could do as a Google Analytics freelancer. Number two, once you've thought about what you enjoy doing, what clients need, and what makes you money, you want to develop a business model. Now think about the type of business that you want to run. Do you want to be automated or do you want to be manual? Meaning, do you want to do things that are automated using technology in order to get the job done? Or do you want to have it high touch, high human element to the work that you're doing? I respect both of these types of businesses and I've done both of them myself. And in the end, you're going to want to make a choice as to which of these you want to perform. You're also going to have to choose, do you want to do recurring projects or one-offs? Things like an audit, it happens one time, and generally speaking, you give them the things that they need to fix, they fix it, and they're good to go. Now, you might need to update that audit over time, but that's more of a one-off project versus something like delivering a report. That's recurring because once you do the report one time, they're going to want the report month after month or week after week in order to see how they're performing compared to what they were looking like before. So let's put this onto a matrix. You have your one-off projects on one side, and you have recurring projects on the other. And then on the other axis, you have automated efforts on top and hands-on efforts on the bottom. And when we put them together, you can put your different business ideas on this continuum and see where they rank and see which of these types of business is going to work best for you. Now, going into this, before you start plotting out the services, before you start determining all this, you do need to go through the previous exercise of saying what you like doing, what somebody will pay you to do, and what the market needs. And you also want to say, do I want to do more automated things versus hands-on manual? Do I want to do one-off projects versus recurring projects? Step three, put it all together. So if we were going to do account audits, it's something we can automate over time. The more account audits we do, the more we can do an automated audit. It's also more of a one-off project. So you're going to have to get a lot of customers in order to make money if you're just doing audits. Even if you can automate it, you're basically going to need to be a sales and marketing machine in order to get people in the door in order to keep on getting paid. On the other hand, something like outsourced analyst, this is something that's recurring where you're probably going to do it every single month. You'll probably be on some kind of monthly retainer and it's going to take a lot of your brain power and it's going to be very manual, very hands-on. So it's almost the opposite of a account audit because in an account audit you need a lot of accounts paying you a little bit of money one time in order to make your living. As an outsourced analyst you might need just one or two clients in order to get to the point where you have the financial freedom and you have the business and your business is performing at the level you want it to be. So these are pretty much on the opposite end of the spectrum. We also have automated monthly reports. Now since these are automated, they're not nearly as hands-on as an outsourced analyst and since they're monthly reports they are recurring. Now this is something where if you like using technology and you want to have recurring revenue occurring over and over again, this might be a good thing to get into, automating monthly reports. But you might find that maybe you don't have as high of a margin on it because people aren't willing to pay as much. Something you need to look at, something you need to consider as you map these out. On the other end of the spectrum, integrations expert, somebody who is hands-on and integrates with different systems, they're going to be somebody who you call in that expert once or twice, they're going to charge a lot of money, but they're going to integrate the systems. Now, once the system is integrated, they're probably not going to need you again. Of course, one-off is never truly one-off. If the system changes or if something updates, you might have some kind of maintenance involved with it. But as far as a first project goes, this is something you'd expect to happen one time, and you might be fortunate to have some kind of recurring revenue coming on later on as part of that project. Now, let's fill out the middle. Say that you just want to be an analytics evangelist. You just want to focus on singing the praises of analytics, teaching people how it works, and getting in front of people and showing them all the cool things they can do. You could say this is one of the closest things that I am to my involvement with analytics right now is actually being somebody who's in that analytics evangelist. Now, you can automate some of it. Some of it's recurring, some of it's hands. It's sort of in the middle, right? I just wanted to give you an example of something that's in the middle because most of these services are actually pretty polarized. Tagging expert, somebody who's an expert in tagging. Now you might have to do tagging over and over again, so your services may be required over and over, and you might be able to automate some of it, but it's still gonna be pretty hands-on because each tagging situation is usually different based on the systems you're working with. We have a general consultant, somebody who's hands-on and somebody who may stick around on a project for a while, so that may be recurring. It's probably not indefinite, but it might be recurring revenue coming in. And finally, you might just choose to be an analytics help desk. All I do is I take off one-off requests of people who have analytics problems and I answer them for them. 
Now you might be able to automate some of the responses, but much of the time it's hands-on. So it's somewhere in between automated and hands-on, but it's mostly a one-off or something where people are paying you per answer. Now this is a model I've seen people use in the past, but I don't see a lot of people using it nowadays because it's very inconsistent. It's basically saying you need to be on demand to answer questions, but it's only a one-off project, so you're not getting the recurring revenue. And so a lot of people may have started with this at one point, but I don't see a lot of future in that becoming the analytics help desk. So I put that in the one-off and somewhat automated, somewhat hands-on. Now, these are just some ideas that I've seen in the marketplace. Obviously, you wanna find your niche, you wanna find your opportunities, and you wanna to compare to your marketplace as well. So the only way to really find out which of these things is right for you is to test the market. You wanna test your sweet spot. Does it actually exist? Does this sweet spot actually exist? Does the matrix make sense? Am I oversimplifying it? Do you like the business model? Is it something you could see yourself doing? Do you think that there's a future in it? Then you wanna execute, iterate, and niche down. And it goes in that order. Execute, iterate, and niche down. Execute means get the job done. Iterate means make continuous improvements. And niche down means making a choice as to this is what I do. In the end, you wanna say this is what I do. This is what my business does. Here's my specialty and here's why I'm worth it. Here's why I'm worth the big bucks, the big money as a consultant. Now this is the hard part and I'm glossing over it in this video. I'm just saying you need to do it all, but that's the hard part. And this is really where you choose your own adventure as a consultant. But I would say more appropriately, the adventure actually chooses you because the market needs to give you feedback as to whether you're going in the right direction and the market is gonna tell you whether this is working or not. So you can have the best plan in the world, but it doesn't matter until you put it in the open market and you see what people actually want. So are you ready to get started as a Google Analytics freelancer? Well, I have a lot of resources for you. I've developed many guides for this. And just to start, I highly recommend that you check out our weekly Agency Sage newsletter at agencycourse.com. If you sign up for that, I'm gonna give you the wisdom that I've found in over a decade as a successful freelancer, agency owner, and entrepreneur at agencycourse.com. And I'll see you over at agencycourse.com.